Welcome to part 4 of our Red Power 2 tutorials. Today we're going to be going over some more advanced machines that are a part of Red Power. Um, they are right over here. First we'll talk about the Retriever, and then we'll talk about the Retrievulator a little bit later on. Restriction tubes, which is the third kind of pneumatic tube that we'll be using, and automatic crafting table Mark IIs. What we have over here is a basic setup. We have our solar panels which are supplying a battery box. This blue wire here that we'll be keeping blue throughout all these tutorials is going to be blue, um, blue electric or blue tricity wire and it's sending power to the retriever here and notice how we don't have the wire stretching around the retriever because each red power machine conducts its own blue tricity. So all you need to do is just snake a wire right out the other side and into this last retriever here. What we're going to do is we're going to pull the redstone from this chest into this retriever here by applying a redstone signal with this lever right up top and you'll watch and see what happens. Let me flick that. There we go. You see the redstone got into this chest and uh, that's what we wanted it to do. Now let's take a look at the inside of the retriever and Ingram will explain what's inside there. So you have a basic nine item uh, user interface here that you can put any item in there and what it will do is depending on what mode it is and we'll show those modes down here it will tick through and try and grab those items and it the way that pneumatic tube routing works is it tries to grab them from the closest valid source so for example with this redstone this crystal chest right here is the closest valid source it has a ton of redstone and it's fine and it'll work um, if we were to put for example, some of this uh, red insulated wire in there, and I just put it all in there. Hang on. If we were to take one out, and what we're going to do is if we put it in here now, you'll notice that there's a, a bracket around this redstone piece. And if we take and pulse, then the first time that the retriever gets pulsed, it'll grab the redstone. If we look back in here, you see that the, the bracket has actually shifted now to red insulated wire. If we pulse it, instead of redstone, it's going to grab that insulated wire. And if we look again, then it's gone back. Now, the second mode is called any item mode. And this is good if you're doing a more advanced um, or more elaborate system. You're going to have a, an issue where, like, for example, if you're working on HV arrays, certain items will take longer to build than others. And if you make it wait in this mode, if it gets stuck on redstone, say that that's a, a medium voltage solar array. And the second component here is a an, an HV transformer for your HV array. It will keep getting stuck on the uh, medium voltage array because they're a lot more difficult to make. They take a lot longer to make um, than the uh, than the transformer. So if we put it in this mode, it'll ask for any one of these that it can get as long as it can still get them. So and it won't toggle through, but it'll keep going until um, it can no longer it can no longer get any of what it's asked for so if I take this redstone out of here and pulse it now there's no more redstone so it's going to shift to the next thing and it's going to try and grab red insulated wire so, so I want that stuff in my chest down here and I have my own retrievulator set up with my own box and I'm going to ask for the same items I'm going to ask for a redstone and let's see if I can get it down here So the problem you're seeing here is with um, the way that pneumatic tubes work. Captain Jack really wants redstone in his chest, but my chest is more important because it's closer. And so his poor little chest will never, ever, ever have redstone. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. We're going to go over the, the right way to do it, but the wrong way to do it is to try and keep these things equidistant from each other. So if I were to go ahead and put a retriever facing here, then these two guys are the exact same distance away from this chest. And it will alternate. The first guy will get it this time. The next time a request comes, this guy will get it. Now, the reason that's no good is because you have to build your entire facility keeping track of exactly how far apart everything is and trying to make sure that if two guys need the same thing, that they're equidistant. That it just won't work. So, enter the retrievulator. And the retrievulator is a ridiculously complicated and annoying word. Um, it's a pretty awesome machine, though. It 
does not take any red zone signal and it does not need any blutricity. It operates entirely on its own. The only requirement is it can't get anything by itself. It needs a retriever to be set up next to it. But the basic idea is this. If I go over here and grab some of this redstone, there's two sides, the R side and the T side, and then this little window over here, which is actually a little bit of a buffer. The T side we'll consider as the target side, and the R side is the request side. So what we do is say that we're building an item that needs, say we're building something like a, an energy crystal that needs eight redstone. What we can do is we can tell the T side to watch what's next to it, so to watch the target chest for eight redstone, and anytime it goes less than that, to request one redstone from the retriever stuck behind it. Now, you can configure these so you can say if for example you didn't want to wait for all the redstone to fill in you can say let's monitor for 16 and anytime you have less than 16 which is twice the amount of redstone that you would need to make an energy crystal anytime you go less than that pull in enough to make an entire new redstone or uh, energy crystal rather so on a larger scale this setup is going to allow each um, crafting table which we'll talk about later to demand from the system from the, net, the tube network behind it all of the components that it needs in order to properly build uh, whatever you're trying to auto craft so let's see what Captain Jack's been up to over here so what he's done is he's taken and the way that these retrievulators work it's kinda confusing at first but if we take I'm just gonna pull it out if we put um, in our T side, remember that the GUI corresponds directly to the actual sides of the retrievulator. So the T side is going to be this chest, and the R side is going to be this retriever, right? So R is for retriever, T is for target. And we'll go ahead and what I want to do is anytime we're less than 32 redstone in our target chest, which we currently are, there's nothing in it, I want to have the system ask for 16 um, redstone. Now you notice that it immediately pulled them out of there, sticks them in the retriever, and there they all come pouring in. And now you see a bunch of them are backing up and going back into the chest, and I'll explain that in a second, but <clears throat> the way that the retriever later works is it uses a retriever to overcome the tube network routing issues. And as soon as it's done, it's, as soon as it has, if we look in here, now we have 32 redstone, the T side of this is satisfied, so it tells the retriever to stop requesting it sends a jammer in there and pulls back its own um, little request stack of 16 here now you, you need to make sure you understand that each of these things corresponds to the other so for example if I were to put this on this side of the R see it's not in the same square it won't actually request that they this corner ties to this corner the first slot to the first slot second to the second Oh, the last one to the last one. So you got to make sure that you keep that, which is useful later when you're trying to trick the retrievulator into pulling um, multiple items uh, in at the same time. So why doesn't this retrievulator retriever combination need a lever or a button or some type of thing? How is this possibly working on its own without some kind of redstone signal? The retrievulator actually will will create its own redstone signal, which is awesome because to have to wire these things up with redstone all the time, to you know, even if you're using the convenient jacketed wire, it really makes it a pain in the butt. And the retriever, unfortunately, does need redstone. So you have a machine, um, this retrievulator is designed to send a redstone signal directly to the retriever behind it. So whenever it needs anything, it will keep pulsing the retriever until it gets what it finally needs. See, so we can see that working here. If we were to take and if I were to grab a lamp really quick, if I could spell it, if I were to grab, let's say, a red lamp and put it on top, you got to be aware that the retriever, or the retrievulator rather, sends a redstone signal to every adjacent block, including the block in front of it. And so here we go, it's sending it to the top block as well as the back block, and we can watch it trying to get the resources it needs. So Captain Jack's going to explain why these things are going all the way back in there. Well, that's the beauty of pneumatic tubes, first of all, over build craft tubes, which are far less superior. 
is that when you had build craft tubes, uh, if you had too much of something headed to a target chest, they would spill out all over the place and lag or sometimes even crash the server. Um, Z did that to our original Tekka server one time with scrap and it took us forever to fix. So we recommend to everyone that's using a Tekkit Classic server or playing on a Tekkit Classic server that you use red power as much as possible. So the redstone is going back into the target chest because the retriever retriever later combination and the target chest ultimately has already been satisfied. So it's asking for 16 if it has less than 32. And since it has that, it says, okay, I'm all full, send it back, we don't need it. So that's why stuff is coming back into this chest. Um, one of the reasons why it's pulling so much is because of the time it takes to get from this chest to the retriever. And since the retriever takes a second to receive the product, it, it doesn't think it has it yet, and it keeps asking and asking and asking. So as you can see, it asks a whole bunch of times. And as soon as it finally has that first stack, it sends all the rest back because it's all full, filled up. Now there is a way to overcome this, and we'll show you that later on. Um, what you're going to want to do is there will be an overflow setup, and also there's some awesome things called mag tubes. And mag tubes move blocks at 20, or move items inside them at 20 blocks a second. So it really cuts down on the amount of waste that your system will have, the amount of overflow, the amount of times that it requests it and doesn't actually need it. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to show you how powerful that setup is. I mean, right now we just showed you is kind of dumping redstone in the chest, but the real power of these things is actually in the way that they can be used in conjunction with something called an automatic crafting table. So I'm just going to set up a couple rigs here. We're actually only going to need two of these, but I'll show you anyway. What we're going to want to do, there's a graphic bug in Tekkit Classic with the way retrievulators work. Now you can see that I place that down right, but for example, if Captain Jack were to take a retrievulator, and I'll give him one here, and if he were to place it down, it should look to me like it's been placed incorrectly. There's no way to rotate these things. You can't, you can't use a uh, screwdriver on them like you can normal machines. But while this machine looks to be placed incorrectly, it does actually still function. And it gets even more confusing in that every time you log back into the server, if I were to leave and come back, the one that I placed would look like it was placed incorrectly too. But it is actually still working. So we'll just fill this up here. Captain, what are we making first? We're going to be making, um, first of all, the final product is going to be an electronic circuit. But in order to make an electronic circuit, you need to combine uninsulated wire and rubber to make copper wire. So we're going to be making copper wire first. And we have the uninsulated wire ready to go in this chest. Which it's in a condenser. I understand it can't be condensed, but I just put it in there anyway. So we need to pull, um, we need to pull copper wire or uninsulated wire and rubber into the same target chest using a retriever retrievulator combination. And one thing to keep in mind is there's a yellow box on the side of this retriever here, and that's the side that you're going to pull out of. The opposite side is the side you're pushing out, out of. So you're pulling into in the yellow side, pushing out of on the other side. You're going to have to make sure all your retrievers are set up that way. And if you set them up wrong, or you orient them wrong, you can use the screwdriver and rotate them. I'm not going to rotate them now because they already have items in them, and I don't want them to spit the items out all over the place. But what I've done here, if you saw me before, I told the machine to watch for 63 uninsulated copper cables, and if it has less than 63, to go and request one, which it's already gone into the retriever so we don't see it anymore. And I did the same thing with rubber. Now what we're going to do is I need to prime the recipe in the automatic crafting table. And so if I open this thing up, and I put a piece of rubber there, and a piece of wire there, and then I put them in the inventory here. We can see that this is the recipe for copper cable, and we're going to need that for the rest of our electronic circuit. So the way that this automatic crafting table works out is each one of these rows is, is a unique inventory that corresponds to the face of the automatic crafting table. Now there's only five because the sixth face is actually the top and that's where you're going to pull items out and put them back into your network. 
the space here on the bottom with the red um, the red highlighting around it is actually where certain items will go if they have a charge and if they've been used so for example if you're using buckets of water to make coolant cells the, the buckets of water will come in and be in one of these rows and then as soon as they're used the empty bucket will get put back in the red one now if you are using tons and tons of buckets of water it will not it'll fill this row up but as soon as it's done filling it up it won't start spilling the empty buckets all over the place again unlike buildcraft which is why I hate buildcraft but it has its place so, especially in ticket light yeah especially in ticket light <laughs> red power is way too expensive but let's see so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use now a restriction tube and the reason I'm gonna do this I'm gonna put it right here is because I wanna block access so that if you remember all the redstone that kept um, pumping back I don't want it to be able to go back in this system because then it might go into the wrong condenser chest so a restriction tube works by making the tube network think that this one block is 5,000 blocks away from all the others so it's going to be really a last resort and you can see that the uh, the chest here is being able to tie into the network doesn't matter how far away it is as long as it's a valid source and it's connected by tubes then it'll satisfy the requirements of the retriever now Captain Jack has put this retriever in any item mode so it's just going to churn through rubber until it's done but if I were to turn it back to um, sequential mode you can see that it's going to it's going to alternate in between copper and rubber copper and rubber copper and rubber until its T side is satisfied and in order for that to happen we need thir we need to have 63 of each and we can see where it is at now uh, it's still got quite a ways to go we can speed that up if we were to put more um, so if I were to put 33 in there and 33 in there it's going to ask for 33 at a time and I'm going to put a chest here and this is going to be for overflow because what we want to do is we don't want all this stuff to go back to the wrong chest and so by putting an overflow chest that's closer we make sure that we're controlling where all the excess items are going to end up going. We don't want them to go all the way back into there because they'll be ruined. And Captain Jack's actually going to go and put restriction tubes here, which I forgot to do, because um, anything that would be currently in these tubes, it's still faster for them to go back, and we don't want that. So at this point, we have a we have a ton of stuff in here for the, to satisfy this recipe. Now we're going to tie this thing in and show you how we can tie it back into our tube network and use it in a different recipe. Now, for purposes of demonstration, I'm going to make it tie all the way back into the network. So this machine is now live and is part of our factory. Anything in the rest of our factory that needs copper cable can grab it right from this machine. And Captain Jack is going to walk us through the setup of the electronic circuit, which is really our target here. All right, so I built two more machines, but we only need one more. This second machine is going to put together all the components of an electronic circuit. One of the components is going to be copper cable, and I'm going to pull a bunch out of our retrievulator setup here, and I'm going to set it up inside the automatic crafting table over here with the pattern, and I'll dump those in there just to keep them. Um, we're going to also be needing some redstone. And I'll throw those in there. And the last thing we're going to need is refined iron, if I can find it. It's over here. Why am I not? Here we go. All right. So I'm going to drop that into here. We have our pattern. We have the electronic circuit. It's going to get made once it gets enough materials. So what we need to ha have happen is this retriever needs to pull all of these different components, which there's three different components, it needs to pull those out of another target chest. Now these energy condensers that I have set up over here are target chests, but also remember that the automatic crafting table right here is also a target chest, and we're going to need that hooked into the system, which Ingram already did, to pull out all of our insulated copper cable. So I'm going to grab a little bit more refined iron. I'm going to grab a little bit more redstone and I'm going to grab 
some more wire out of this machine here. One of the most important things that you have to keep in mind when you're working on this is the ratios um, at which it makes things. Now we're making one copper cable out of this automatic crafting table so you're gonna have to pull it one at a time out of that crafting table so we're gonna put let's say if we have we'll do 12 if we have less than 12 I'm gonna spawn some in here we're gonna pull six because that's the requirement we're gonna can actually I'm yeah sorry. we can actually pull six that's the part of the problem with the way these work we have to pull exactly what the automatic crafting table makes so as much as we'd like six at a time it only makes one at a time the recipe only makes one so you have to pull exactly one unless you're pumping into a chest that will store a ton of these at once then you can do you have a little more leeway all right we just have to add in the refined iron now we have less than 16 I'm gonna go ahead and grab one now it should already have well, stuff's backing up in here first of all, and the main reason why it's backing up is because it has no electricity power. So we're going to put in one piece of wire right here. That's going to cause that retriever to start loading up, and there it goes. It's immediately starting to work. <laughs> so it's going to ask for a bunch of stuff. We're going to throw it into single item mode there to grab a couple of the other components at the same time instead of having to wait. I want to put our copper cable back in. There's a little bit of a little bit of a hang up there. Here, the chest was already satisfied. That's why. Go ahead and do that oh, again. Oh, okay. That explains it. All right, so yeah. There, now we see the copper cables in there because it's not in the, remember the, the way that these work is the row will actually go. And yeah, Captain Jack is pointing out here that you can see that because this um, automatic crafting table is, is set up in our network now, we are able to pull this retriever, retrievulator setup is able to pull directly out of the top of this automatic crafting table. Now that's a key principle, design principle of the way these things work. And if we were to tie this in like Captain Jack is just starting to do here. Now anything that needs um, electronic circuits, now that we've tied this into our network, anything else that needs electronic circuits, we'll be able to pull them right out of the top of this automatic crafting table. So you can see how this is a really powerful um, machine. And the more that you set up, the more items you can do. The, basically, once you build an item this way for the first time, you never need to make it manually again. So how do we speed this process up? Because these pipes are slow. Yeah, so in order to do that, we're going to have to set up what are called mag tubes. And mag tubes are a little bit difficult to make. But again, once you set up an automatic crafting rig, that should really solve a lot of the problems. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut out here for a bit. We're going to set it up with mag tubes and then come back and explain how that all works. <laughs> Okay, so here's the same setup, except now this time we're going to use mag tubes. And mag tubes, as if you might recall from earlier in the video, will actually move items at 20 blocks per second. That might actually be fast enough that we won't see them coming through. They should be an extremely fast blip uh, across the screen here. So if, for example, yeah, you can see them whizzing through there. Captain Jack's over there pulling stuff out of the, out of the tables to trigger a demand for it. And you can see it screaming through. Um, this is especially important for large factory designs. For example, our Megalith factory, if you recall from that video, um, it goes it goes uh, 26 stories high. And so to keep moving stuff through the slow tubes, that would really create a problem. So these mag tubes um, really, really tend to speed things up. So um, 
How do we get these things? Why are some of these powered? They are powered because I have a blue electric cable or jacketed blue wire between each of these machines. Accelerators act as a speeding up agent and they also act as decelerators as a slowing down agent. Um, and they do need blue tricity in order for them to be powered. And again, all red power conducts its own blue tricity. So I don't need wires wrapping all the way around all over the place. I just need one wire connecting each component of red power. And they will light up in this nice pretty blue when they are powered. If they're not powered, they're going to look like this. And then they're going to power up really quick. There we go. That's not powered. But since it's adjacent to another one, it's going to power up. And remember that all... Um, Machines, all red power machines that support Bluetricity will actually uh, share their Bluetricity with adjacent components. So these accelerators are powered by virtue of the fact that these retrievers are also powered. Now, when you come into the back of a target chest or a retriever, as in this example here, you do not need to put a tube between them. You see how there, it looks like there's a piece of wooden tube and it puts that graphic in by itself. You can slam into the back of these things at full speed, but as Captain Jack has set up over here, in order to pull things out, you need a tube in between them. And the reason that we use restriction tubes is because we don't want anything to ever back in, into, or overflow rather, into the top of one of these chests. We only want it to come one way. Last, absolute last resort is for it to go into the, uh, the overflow chest, and even more of a last resort is for it to come into the back of the, uh, or into the top rather of the automatic crafting table and we force that by using these restriction tubes so this is the most effective way that um, we've designed to automatically craft basically every item in the game which is what you hopefully saw if you watched our mega factory video um, it's a little bit different setup a little bit cleaner a little bit more compact um, but this is a general idea this is how it's set up this is how it grabs each each component for each part that you want to make and once you start uh, with simple circuits you can use the circuits and other things to make advanced circuits um, you just keep adding more condensers more chests to pull out of and you can basically make anything in the game and make your factory as big as you want one thing before we go to, to make note of is the fact that we left one space in between these now the reason for that is you have to remember Retrievulators pulse their redstone pulse to all adjacent blocks. So if we were to put another retrievulator right in between those two guys, then their signals would conflict and nobody would get anything except a headache. Now, you can actually go, if I just use that quickly as a placeholder, let me use a lamp that way, I'm not messing with tubes. This setup, however, would work perfectly fine, despite from the graphic glitch there. These things are not considered to be adjacent, they're diagonal, they're not adjacent, so their signals won't interact with each other, and they'll work fine. You can actually stagger your, your whole design like that. It does make it very difficult um, in the future to try and maintain this because of the fact that all your, uh, all your tubes are going to be coming out of the front, and it's going to make it a little bit difficult to, to reach in behind and get to the crafting table. But once you've done that, or once you have your whole setup, um, you can actually condense it a lot like this. And I was freaking stuck again. <laughs> Alright, so that's it for the basics of uh, retrievers, retrievulators, restriction tubes, and auto crafting table mark two. Look for the next video. We'll talk about some of the more advanced uh, Part 5 will be more advanced machines. We're going to talk about some sorting machines and a little bit of um, tube painting and a little bit of logic circuits and get you guys going with that. All right. Thanks for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, or subscribe. Let us know if you have any problems. And as always, stay poised. No, we forgot in another video to plug the crap out of our web website. Oh, man. <laughs> We can make. Oh, we could just do a banner at the end. Just visit us the Minecraft at the Minecrafters.com. <laughs>